What's up? Hi. Hi. You look so gorgeous, by the way. Let's start there. Thank love you. Love your hair. Love your fit. I love your hair. Love your fit, too. Oh, thanks, boo. Thanks, boo. I try. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, too? I'm fine. I'm fine. Welcome to Lagos. I'm sure this isn't your first time here. It's my first time in it Nigeria. Is? Yes, I came a few days ago. Oh, and wow. then I went to Abuja. Uh-huh. And then I came back to Lagos. Okay, how's that going for you? How are you feeling the vibe? I love it. I love it here. It's a very nice place to be. Mm-hmm. And whenever I leave, I would come back again. Are you serious? Yeah. I feel like you guys in Ghana stole our rocks. <laughs> so now the party's <laughs> happening there. <laughs> and not so much here anymore. I mean, it's still poppy because, you know, you know, party like Lagos, Lagos party. <laughs> you know the vibe. So you dropped, let's talk about your song, see if we're gonna, we can talk about your remix that's come out. Yeah. But this song, first of all, you dropped it in 2020. Yes. It did uh, amazingly yes. well. Yes. Charles in Lagos, Charles in Nigeria, Charles in Ghana, and a few other countries. Yeah. Did you expect it to do that well? Yeah, I actually did. Really? Yes, because it's a good song. It's a good song. But I didn't expect it to get to this maximum. Uh-huh. So it came off as a surprise to me, but at the same time, I knew the song was good and I knew people were going to love it whenever they heard it. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. What's the weirdest country that it charted in? That you were like, oh, you guys are listening to me there? Uh, What country is it? Zambia. Ah, uh, yes, actually. And yeah. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Yes, it's actually charted in a lot of the African countries and the countries that are also not in Africa as well. So we're praying that it gets into larger countries and then the songs becomes a worldwide song i mean now you have a remix for my which is fire yeah so that's gonna push it a lot more we'll talk about that in a bit but this ep the cdp where the song was off the cover art is so adorable thank you it's little you and your very famous dad yes the and studio. then my kid brother yes we were in the studio i think i was about six years old yes i actually went to the studio to record a song the same one a song called lollipop Really? I wrote it when I was really young. <laughs> recorded it then, but that song is sleeping somewhere. Wait, can you find it? Let's hear I it. I actually have it, <laughs> but I always don't want to play. My manager always wants us to play. But I think you should. It's actually really funny, but yes. You yes, know what you should will. do? You should take it and sample it on a new song. We'll actually do that. That'll he has so plans fire. on the song, actually. Yeah. yeah. Don't let that song die. But let's talk about coming from a legendary household. You know, your dad was a legend, you know, a big star in Ghana. What would you say? What was that conversation like when you told him, look, this is what I want to do too. I'm about to jump into music. What was that like? Yeah, so uh, the thing is, I didn't actually speak to my dad that I want to record music. Mm-hmm. I was a stubborn kid when I was... Because whenever I hear beats or whenever I see a microphone, there's a speaker, I'm always like excited. Yeah. So this song was actually recorded on campus with a Nigerian producer. He's called okay. Sosa. But he was a student on campus as at that time. So I actually recorded a song before I played it to my parents. I didn't tell them before I went to record. So I didn't want anybody to come and tell me, no, don't go and record this. So now it's done. So You can't right. say anything now. E- exactly. But so, would they have said no? No, I don't think they would have mm. because, I mean, this is something that I have passion for. Uh-huh. I love music. and then So they heard it and then they actually loved it. And then when we dropped the song, the feedback from people was positive, and that is what motivated me to keep on drop going. the next song and the next song and the next song. Is music something you've always known you wanted to do? Not something I I always knew I would do, but I knew I was a lover of music. Mm. You know, I actually noticed the uniqueness the uniqueness in my sound after I dropped "Love Is Pretty." You know, I wasn't really paying attention to the fact that I had a certain voice. I was just, you know, if you, if I have to sing, I just grab the microphone and I just sing yeah. without knowing what it actually is. Until the feedback I got after the first song dropped. And then that was when I started noticing that, oh, I actually do have a tiny little nice voice. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little <laughs> tiny bit. You know one thing I like about you? I like how sure you are in yourself and your sound and what you're bringing to the table. Mm. And I feel like that's one big key thing to be successful yeah because obviously with music and the creative scene generally there's so many different people who are doing different things right you have to be sure about what you're bringing to the table what else would you say is something that you've learned is important for success consistency mm. yeah if, if you started off with something that caught people's attention you don't need to drive away from it and that is one thing that my manager and i always make sure we're doing whatever that we did that caught you and the fans <laughs> attention to yeah. love my music and to follow 
my craft, that is what we are going to keep doing till the end of time. All right, that makes sense. So we have your remix of Amelie here. Mm-hmm. Tell me about this. How did this come about? Who reached out to who? Okay, so the remix actually dropped midnight, midnight mm-hmm. and we reached out to him. And then when we sent the song over, he fell in love with it. And in a few hours, he sent his verse back. So it didn't really take even a long time for him Are to you record serious? his part. And then he sent it back. We've actually shot a video for it. Whoop, whoop. So look out for the, visha- the visuals coming up really, really soon. All right. Do you want to introduce this one? Let's hear it. Okay. So um, coming up next is Forever, the remix featuring Omale. It's 11.39 on the B99.9 FM, the midday show. My name is Dean, and that one was the remix of Dawson Sense, Toby, and Oxlade. Now, before the news, you heard another brand new remix that just dropped. It's Jackie and Omale with the remix to Forever. She's in the building, first time in Lagos. What's up? <coughs> how you doing? <coughs> I'm good. <laughs> so we've been talking about this a little bit. You know, you talked about how you reached out to Omale, got him on the track, he fell in love, yeah. and he dropped the song in, what, a few hours? Yes. He brought his verse in a few hours. So how come you chose Omale? Well, first of all, Omale is really talented. Yes. yes. And then when we listened to the song and the beats, we realized that he would ride on it really nice. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then, I mean, we made a very good decision at the end of the day. I think you did too. But going forward, who else would you like to work with? I'd love to work with Asha. Oh, yes. Yes, yes the icon. She is on top of my list. Aside here, I mean, I would love to work with all the great talents we have in Africa. All right, fair enough, fair enough. So the song itself was written, I heard this summer, that was written about the love that you want to have, you know, your in future, future love life. Yes, please. So how come that hasn't happened? Is it because you have a very specific view of love or streets are just rugged? Um, so actually, if you listen to the song and then you read the lyrics, you would understand the story I'm trying to tell. Mm-hmm. I actually wrote it in my room alone during the lockdown period in Ghana last year. And I just, I just... I was just imagining how I wanted my future love life to be like, probably on my wedding day, whoever I end up being with. And so, yeah, whenever I listen to the, so- the song, I actually see myself in the future. That's so cute. <laughs> so in love. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you think you'll walk down the aisle to that song? Yes, I will. Really? I will. I will. You should too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring it up. Um, I have to. I love Thank you. Love it. Um, I wanted to find out a bit more about your sound. Right. You've got like a lovely, like husky, mm-hmm. buttery voice. So Thank when you. did you actually find out that, when did you discover that you um, could sing and, you know, you had a talent towards music? Yeah, that was after I dropped my first song. Mm-hmm. Love is Pretty. And the feedback I got from the people that listened to the song actually drew my attention to the fact that there is something different about the way I sing. And tell us a bit more about the Ghanaian music scene. Is it, I mean, you've been here for like a few days now. Mm. Um, Is it quite similar to the Nigerian music scene or are they like worlds apart? Well, there isn't any any big difference. I mean, Ghanaians love music a lot. So do Nigerians. And then I feel like it's part of the reasons why we're like twins. Mm. Anybody that comes to Ghana from Nigeria loves the place. That's the same way. Any other person from Ghana comes to Nigeria, they do do the same thing. I just feel like we just need to work more. Right, just as I have a song with Omale, I feel like the collaborations also need to be a bit more so that the Nigerians can accept the Ghanaian sound just as Ghanaians also have accepted the Nigerian sound. So there's not any huge difference for the Ghanaian music and then the Nigerian industry as well. And what do you think about our, what should I call it, brotherly or sisterly tips? <laughs> every, like, every few months, every, like, year or so, there seems to be this, oh, you know, Ghana versus Nigeria thing. Yeah. Is it, I mean, I don't take it seriously. Is that the same way it is in Ghana? No, I think the only, one like, that, the only one that we could take serious is the Jollof rise. Let's, without, let's not start I mean, that, that one. one let's not start that <laughs> With let's that, not... it's going to be for life. But aside <laughs> that, I mean... The sister and then the brother love the family thing. I yeah. mean, it's, it's just it's actually lovely. It's really nice, and I would want it to be for a long time. Yeah, but there's no actual serious. You know, no. we don't want Nigerians here. No, 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 no. The love is really deep, and you know the vibes already now. Yeah. I know. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Like I keep on saying that I need to come back to Ghana. I've only yeah. been there like um, I think I've only been twice. Wow. 
Mm-hmm. And I just kept saying I want to come back, but I had a lovely, lovely time. Uh, where was I? I was in Accra. I was in Kumasi as well. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so uh, when we come back, we're going to call you. Oh, yeah, yeah you should. I'm yeah. actually in Kumasi. Oh, really? Yes. And oh, so I saw like there, there are lots of these um, like resorts, like almost safari like resorts and oh, everything. You, you Anyways, you I'm going to have a good time. I did. I did. I wanted to come back. But then it just, I just like, okay, next year, then next year, then COVID happened. Mm, yeah. yeah. So, you know, but I'm definitely calling you next time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Before I let you go, who else should we be listening to in the Ghana scene? Oh, there's a lot of them. I put mean. us on, put us on. Yes. I'm sure you know if, yeah? Of, of course. course. Yes. Yes, yes yeah. right. So you should listen to Adina. You should listen to um, Kim Promise, oh, Sarko yes, Dear, so. Joey B, um, Bisake Day. Yes, love him. But I actually have a song with him. He has a song with me as well. Um, oh, and then Kofi Jama. He's an up and coming artist like myself. Kofi Jama. Okay. Yes. I don't know if you're listening. If you're in Ghana yeah, in December, okay. it's a drill song. Yes. And then drill is also penetrating. Yeah, Ghana drill is huge. Wildly. It's massive. Wildly. Yes, yes. And so there's so many artists you need to check out in Ghana. I like these collaborations. I'm looking forward to more Nigerian, Ghanaian, you know, the music yes, kind of mixing yes, up. Yes, I'm looking forward to it as well. All right, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much Have for having me. Have a fantastic time in Lagos. Right. Yes, I'm actually, I actually am. And then I said earlier on that I will come back. If I go back to Ghana, I'm going to come back again. Yes, when is Dead December? Come back. I will rock off well. Then yeah. she's going to be de- doing Ghana. In December. That's what I was saying. They kind of stole our rocks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They've taken over December. It's 11.45, the B99.9 FM. Thank you so much, Jackie, for stopping by. Thank you so much for having me. Stream her song, Forever the Remix, Jackie and Amale. More music coming up. This one is Western. Uh, Mama we, Stay. How can they follow you? Right, they right, right, you? right, right. My social media is at Jackie underscore G-Y-A-K-I-E underscore. G-Y-A-K-I-E underscore. And that's what my management is at Flip the Music. All right, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.